Hello everybody, thank you once again for joining me for this week's edition of the Ramp Packs. Today I'm going to talk about a few things I've got on my mind. First one being Nexus of Fate uh, and how terrible that card is and has been. Uh, some gold spending strategies between now and the next expansion. We know it's coming out sometime in April, so I'm going to talk about how I spend my gold and, and what I save for and how I do that. And coming up later this week on this channel, I'm going to go over some mono white aggro. I did spend some wild cards on a top tier mono white deck, so I'll play through that in the ladder and see if I can't make a dent. I'm a little disappointed with the ladder, but um, it's not going too bad. So for all that content and more, subscribe. My name is Justice. My handle is Sarcantuna. I would like to address something that I think is a pretty big mistake, and that is Nexus of Fate. And I'm imagining this, like this scenario, just picture this if you will. There's a boardroom, and it's like some long table. And there's, there's one decision maker at the head of this table, and there's five people sitting at it, and they're all dressed according to their color, right? There's like, there's like Augustus Gloop, and he's blue. And there's Miss Scarlet, and she's red. And there's, there's some like black and, and white and green people too. They're just sitting there at this table. And the blue guy says, I got an idea for a card for Core 19, right? I got an idea for a card where you can, I'm gonna, you can play this card and you can take an extra turn. And then not only that, it's going to be at instant speed. So I can cast it in response to anything. I'll just cast it. I'm going to take another turn. And, and better than that, when I cast it, no, not when I cast it. When it simply goes into the graveyard from anywhere, if I discard it, if it gets milled, it just goes right back into my library. I just shuffle it back into my library. How about that? And all these other people are like, yeah, no problem. It's fine. How could this possibly go wrong? Totally fine. And Tefiri's there. And Tefiri's like, I agree with this decision. <laughs> like, how did this get out of this fly? And now that we have Wilderness Reclamation, it was already a Bant deck to begin with, so it's got green colors in there. And now that there's Wilderness Reclamation, you can untap Wilderness Reclamation, untap all your lands, and then in response to that, you, you can play Nexus of Fate. Like, how is this... How is anybody not seeing this and going, hey, I think we have a problem here. So hopefully, with any bit of luck, very, very soon, sooner than that, they just ban Nexus of Fate. It is a problem. It needs to go away. And it's not so much of a problem that, like, well, it's a deck type and we should learn how to beat it. I'm all for that, right? I don't mind control. I don't mind burn. I don't mind mill. Uh, it, they're, they're deck types. You can beat them. But they at least don't turn the game into solitaire. And that's what I hate the most about Nexus of Fate. Uh, I, I don't get a chance to make a counterplay or play the game at all. It's just you can keep this infinite loop going. And your win condition is simply uh, running me out of time and energy to sit there and watch you do this. Or sometimes they'll play a hydroid crisis and be able to attack. It's just, it's a dumb way to, to have the game going. And they stack. Are you kidding me? So I can play Nexus of Fate and then Nexus of Fate again and get two turns in a row? How dumb is that? Like, it's just, it's not a good system, and I wish they would correct that. By simply banning Nexus of Fate, I will be very disappointed if they ban Wilderness Reclamation instead, because I think Wilderness Reclamation actually has a place in Simic. Uh, I think it's got a place in Gruul. I, I don't mind it so much, because it just untaps your lands, and in theory, you would be able to still make reasonable plays the next turn with those untapped lands, and you wouldn't be playing a Nexus of Fate. It's, it's just dumb, and, and I really hate that. And that's been on my mind a lot lately. It's been really frustrating because there's a lot of Nexus of Fate decks in uh, in the ladder where I'm playing in. And that brings me to my gold spending strategy. So if you'll see, I am on the store page um, because I am going to be buying 11 packs today. Now, it's what? It's February 10th as of the shooting of this video here. So you might be seeing it a day later. Uh, we know the next set's coming out in April. We know this. It's not a secret. Their schedule has been their schedule for 25 years. And I'm going to start saving up my gold um, March 1st. So I'm going to save for about six weeks there. That'll give me about thirty to 40,000 gold. And that's enough to get started. Uh, my Ravnica Allegiance collection is almost where I want it to be, um, but not quite. And since I've already done this weekend's events, they went pretty well. I was very happy with them. I have this leftover gold I can spend on packs. Now, if you're spending your gold every day, it's the same thing, right? I just do it once at the end of the week for the first reason is that to show you guys what I get out of it. Um, so that way when I go to open the packs, you know, I've got 14. I just bought 11, got my three for the week. 
and I can show you guys how to build that collection up on, in the free to play space because I'm all free to play. I don't spend any money. These gems I built up doing uh, sealed events and spending gold on drafts to get the, the gems on the back end, which works out really well. Um, and then once I save the gold up for the the initial pack opening for the sets, I tend to get some pretty decent cards, and that helps me get started with that pack, and I only ever buy the most recent set. Um, it will be a disadvantage when they go from open beta to the live version of the game. They're probably going to do a collection wipe, and so the first few weeks of that are going to be tricky. It always are. We just got to fight through it, and we got to make the best possible deck we can with the cards we have and play that one and get our collections restarted. But then it only takes a couple of months before a new set comes out, and then the playing field is sort of leveled again for us. Um, just something we have to deal with in the free-to-play space. Or you could drop some money on the game, you know, 20 or 30 bucks or so to get started, and then that will help alleviate some of that initial, uh, you know, the initial not having of of a collection after the wipe. And then coming up this week, I did spend some wild cards on a mono white aggro deck, which I felt like was I was in a pretty good place to do that because I didn't have to buy a lot of Ravnica Allegiance cards with my wild cards. And so I'm not going to run into a situation where I just spent wild cards on that. Now I got it in the packs. Uh, that's pretty detrimental to me in the free-to-play space. So look forward to that. It is the deck I'm using to climb the ladder this week. And hopefully I can make some progress. Let me see if I can show you guys where I'm at. Um, first of all, hide my camera so that that way, there we go. I did make it back up to, I'm in platinum tier four in constructed. And that was, this was a chore. I mean, it's, it's hard to climb the ladder and you got to get so many wins and I'm playing a top tier deck. So I should be able to climb through platinum and get back up to diamond here in the next week or so. And then maybe the last two weeks of the month, I can actually make the achievement and get it, get all the way to mythic. So uh, hopefully I can get there. I should be able to get out of the bronze tier with limited next weekend. Try and do one draft a weekend, so hopefully I can get back up there. But I'm not really worried about my limited rank because it is kind of tricky. Uh, limited's a little harder, and it's a lot more expensive too. Uh, constructed is free to play, free to play friendly, especially in best of ones. And it looks like they still have the reward set to be. Guilds of Ravnica versus Ravnica Allegiance. So that's kind of interesting at this point. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we get in this week's packs. I'll be kind of curious to see if I get anything really strong or, or not. I'm looking forward to making more Spawns of Mayhem for a mono black aggro deck as well. I think that's going to be pretty cool to see. Another wild card there, that's good. I like Burn Bright. I think this has some use. Especially with a bunch of little goblins or something, and then you give them all plus two plus O. Hero of Precinct 1, that's great. I like the... Uh, there's a lot of multicolored decks out there right now, so Hero gives you a token. Sunder Shaman. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Can't be gang blocked. That's pretty good. And you can destroy an artifact or enchantment if he deals damage. That's kind of cool. I like it. Need those. This is going to be a, a card to get also. Growth Chamber Guardian. It's got some elf synergy. It's also got, <laughs> if you're making like a crab warrior deck, you know, you need those. But there, it's a two casting 2-2 two, two, and it adapts for three. And then you can get more Growth Chamber Guardians out of it. Very strong. Little Song of Frey Elise maybe. I like Frilled Mystic. It's good. Ballrack Clan Crusher is, is okay. Verity Circle, huh? Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you can draw a card. Mm. That's probably got a use, but I don't think we'll see it. High alert, I like that. I I I don't know. I like high alert. I do. Um, except anytime you make a deck and it relies on just one card, you're risking disappointment when that one card gets removed revival and Reven i like revival too it's sort of like a johnny but if it costs three or less it goes right to the battlefield that's this has resplendent angel written all over it right like orzov angels synergy i think that's gonna happen wild cards wild cards that's great rakdos firewheeler 
That's okay. When it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to an opponent and two damage to a creature or planeswalker. That's actually really good. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of these in like Rakdos aggro decks. Glass of the Guild Pact. I think there's something here. I'm not seeing it too much though. And we might see more of these combos come to life in the next Grand Prix too, like Azorius Knight Arbiter. It can't be blocked. So would it be worth enchanting him up in Storm and making a control deck and, and Azorius Knight Arbiter is your kill card? I don't know. We'll find out after the next Grand Prix for sure. Speaking up, wow. Look at this pack. This is Azorius pack to the nines right here. I love Dovin's Acuity. Mythic wild card coming my way. That's terrific. Let's see. Deputy of Detention. That's good. I like the deputy. These are these are like stupid strong. When they enter the battlefield, you exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name. So I was playing uh, mono white aggro and I had three um it was like Snubhorn sentries, and I had the city's blessing, so they were three threes, right? And one deputy of detention comes down and uh, and took them all. So I was like, hey man, all of my uh, all of my snubhorns were gone because you got one deputy of detention. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, nothing good here. Screaming shield. That's not awful for, like, a high alert, but I'm, I'm not sold on high alert. I might try it. Zagana, got a couple of those now, so that's good. Haven't made... Uh, Merfolk is pretty strong. Actually, Merfolk's rated as one of the strongest aggro decks. It's got, like, a 60% win rate. I might have to build that again and see if we've got some, some nice updates that are worth it. Pitiless Pontiff, nothing too strong in this pack. A wild card. Wild card's always good for me. I love those, especially because I can just make my own decision. Another wild card here. Orzov Enforcer. Okay. Gateway Sneak. Okay. Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones is going into Mono Black Aggro, so that fits very nicely. Haven't seen a Mythic other than, I think, a wild card. Cry of the Carnarium is good. Windstorm Drake is good. I lied. That's not good. It's too expensive. Font of Agonies. That's tricky. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on the font. Hmm. It's tricky. You might have a place with like Argul's Blood Fast or something, and then you're just running massive enchantments. Another Sunder Shaman. Another common wild card. That's good. Another Judith. I like Judith. She's really badass. Uh, really strong. Really strong. Judith is like crazy strong. Spirit of the Spires is okay. Guy Engineer is okay. Got a couple of those now, so that's good. Another Mythic Wild card. I appreciate that. That's great stuff. No Mythics, though. No actual, like, Mythic mythic Rares coming my way. Unless this is one. A Breeding Pool. That is my fourth Breeding Pool, so the game obviously wants me to go into Simic. So maybe I should go into Simic with Galloping. Oh, I tried with Galloping Lizrog. It didn't work very well. But I think I'm only a couple of wild cards away from, like, let me see, six rares, seven mythics. So that's not bad. I could do a few more, like, growth chamber guardians and go all into Simic. That'd be kind of cool. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Do appreciate all the support. Have a good one.